Welcome back. Today we will be talking about arc length. And uh, <clears throat> to get us started thinking in the right direction today, I want to review something. So the first thing I'm going to say today will be a little bit of review. And that is, um, how do you find the distance between two distinct points in the plane? So if you have two points in the plane, uh, and so maybe this guy I call x1, y1, and I have another point in the plane, let's call this guy x2, y2. So this is the point x1, y1, this is the point x2, y2. Then the way that you find the distance between these two points is you end up using the Pythagorean theorem. So there's some horizontal distance here and there's some vertical distance here. The horizontal distance between these two points we could call that x2 minus x1 and the vertical distance between the two points that's y2 minus y1. Okay, So uh, it is possible um, and uh, here I'm assuming that the bigger of the two points is x2 and the bigger of the two y values is y2, but really if we wanted to be absolutely sure on this, we'd say the absolute value of those quantities. Okay, so uh, and then once we know those quantities, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this uh, the hypotenuse of the triangle, which I'll call D. So we'd say that the distance is equal to, well, uh, the square root of the horizontal change squared, which is x squared minus, I'm sorry, x2 minus x1 quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. And if we plugged in x2, x1, y2, and y1 to this distance equation, what we'd end up with is the distance between those two points. Okay, so this is going to help us today as we start to think about this concept of arc length. All right, so now what I want to do is let's uh, talk about the problem for the day, which is arc length. And so let's say that we have a function Here's a function, and it has a starting point, we could call it A, and it has an ending point, let's call it B, and this is my function f of x. And the question is, what if I wanted to know how long this function was? In other words, if this function were a string, and I could take the ends of the string and pull it tight, how long would the string be when I pulled it tight? Another way of thinking about it is if you were taking a walk on this path and you started at this point, ended at this point, how far did you walk? Okay, so that's the problem of arc length. Well, it ends up it's not such an easy answer because, well, it's curved, right? Straight line distance, we know how to calculate straight line distance between two points, but curved distance is harder. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that we do a lot, a lot of the time in calculus, and that is could we estimate it in some way? And that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to say let's estimate how far this is. And the way I'm going to estimate it is I'm going to break it up into some pieces. And so maybe I call this first point when I've broken it up into pieces, I'll call that x0. The second one I'll call x1. The third I'll call x2. And so on, all the way up to the last one we'll call x sub n. So maybe there are some other points in here too, but let's call this one x sub k minus 1. And this one I'll call x sub k. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is if I've broken this up into pieces, again, there could be more dots in here. 
Um, I've broken it up into in pieces, this interval. Now what I want to do is let's just look at one piece, all right? So I'm going to blow up the cape piece and just look at it. Now if I blew, blow up this little section right here, it looks something like this. It's slightly curved, right? And this is, again, this is my x sub k minus 1. This is my x sub k. And what I'm going to do to estimate this little distance right here is I'm just going to pretend that it's straight. If it were straight and it weren't curved like this, then how far would I have to go between these two points? Well, we know that, right? We know the length of that uh, straight line distance, we just use the distance formula like I just talked about. So let's, uh, let me write this down. So if we wanted the length of the kth piece, then the way that we would do that is we would use the distance formula. So let me write it this way, it would be the square root of, um, Okay, if this is x of k minus 1, we could call this guy y sub k minus 1. Uh, and then if this is x sub k, this guy is y sub k. And now the way that I'd use the distance formula is this is going to be x sub k minus x sub k minus 1 squared plus y sub k minus y sub k minus 1 squared. All right, so this is the length of the kth piece. All right, now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to remind myself something about the mean value theorem. Okay, the mean value theorem is something we studied in calculus 1 and it's going to be important right now. So let me write down what the mean value theorem says. So the mean value theorem tells us that uh, if this is a nice differentiable function and I've got this two endpoints on this function, then somewhere in between those two endpoints there is a point on the curve where the derivative at that point, usually we call this point C, where f prime of c is equal to the slope in between the two endpoints. Okay, that's what we call the mean value theorem. Uh, another way of writing it would be this, that uh, f of x sub k minus f of x sub k minus one divided by x sub k minus x sub k minus one, that's the slope between these two points, that that slope is somewhere in between equal to the derivative at a point C. That's what the mean value theorem says, so I'm just rewriting the result of the mean value theorem. But let's look at this in a different way. Uh, x sub k minus x sub k minus one, we have another word for that. We could call that delta x sub k. Also, this is y sub k minus y sub k minus 1, so we could call this delta y sub k. Uh, let's do that. And so if I rewrite that using deltas, this is delta y sub k divided by delta x sub k is equal to f prime of c. All right. Now what I want to do is let's multiply both sides of this equation by delta x sub k. If I multiply both sides by delta x sub k, I get that delta y sub k is equal to f prime of c times delta x sub k. Now let's go back over here. The length of the kth piece, I said it was x sub k minus x sub k minus 1 quantity squared. Well, but this right here, 
x sub k minus x sub k minus 1, that is delta x sub k. So let's substitute it in. This is equal to the square root of this is delta x sub k quantity squared and y sub k minus y sub k minus 1, that's delta y sub k, but I just said that delta y sub k is f prime of c times delta x sub k. So this is plus, this is f prime of c times delta x sub k, quantity squared. All right, let's keep working on this. Okay, notice that this one's squared, and here I could distribute that square to both of these guys, and let's see what we would get. So if I rewrite that length, I get that this is the square root of delta x sub k plus f prime of c um, quantity squared times delta x sub k squared. Notice there's a delta x sub k, this is squared as well, uh, squared here, there's a delta x sub k squared here, so I could factor out the delta x sub k. In fact, I could bring it all the way out of the square root, and if I did, it would just be a delta x. So let's write it that way. So I'm just factoring out the delta x sub k squared and bringing it out of the square root. So I end up with the square root of 1 plus f prime of c squared for some c inside of the interval. Okay. All right. That's true um, of every single one of these little intervals. So if I wanted to add up my estimation of the length of the total curve, so this is how I get the length of one little subinterval. If I wanted to do this for everyone, um, I would say that the length is approximately equal to, and uh, the sum, k going from 1 to n of these guys, of the square root of 1 plus f prime, I'll call this c sub k because it's a different one for every single k, uh, quantity squared, and then I have, I, I up here I should have, I factored out the delta x sub k, so it's sitting right here as a delta x sub k, and it's sitting here as a delta x sub k. All right, now that we've got this, now that we've got this, what do I want if I want the actual length, then I'd break it up into more and more pieces. In other words, I'd let the number of pieces that I'm breaking this thing up into go to infinity. When I do, all I'm really doing is taking the limit of this sum as n goes to infinity. So the actual arc length, or the length, is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k going from 1 to n of the square root of 1 plus f prime of c sub k quantity squared times delta x sub k. But this is exactly a Riemann sum. And this Riemann sum, because of the fundamental theorem, I know that I can convert this into a definite integral, and the definite integral will look like this. That the length is equal to the integral from A to B. This becomes my integration sign, and then I get the square root of 1 plus, this is F prime of some point, some special point, squared, so this just becomes f prime of x quantity squared, and then the delta x of k just becomes my dx. And so this is how we compute the arc length 
of a curve. Uh, we started at x value a, we ended in x value b, and what we integrate is the square root of 1 plus the derivative of that function squared dx. And it's really important that you remember that it's the derivative that goes in right there and not the function. That's a very easy mistake to make. So the first thing when you're doing an arc length problem, you need to find the derivative of the function and then plug it into this integral, integrate, and then you get your answer. Okay, so why did I go through all of this uh, derivation and not just start with the formula? Well, it's really important in mathematics and in calculus that you realize that this stuff isn't just magic, okay? These formulas that we get for arc length and things, they're not magical formulas. We can prove that they are true. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I wanna go through this process and show you that this didn't come just out of nowhere. We just derived it using the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem basically together with the mean value theorem helped us to derive this formula for arc length. So now you're ready to uh, watch me do some examples and then do some examples yourself in your homework.